Okay, so here we need to find the intersection of these two equations. And you might recognize this first equation right here as the equation of a circle, right? x squared plus y squared equals 9. And this 9 here, right, that's the radius squared, so that means the radius equals 3. And you might also recognize that this circle will be centered at the origin. And here you might recognize this as a linear equation because the exponent on the variables is just 1. When that's the highest exponent, you do have a line or a linear equation. Now, to think about what's happening here, right? these two things, we hope, are meeting at least somewhere. Because what can happen when you have a circle, if you think about this for a moment, and a line, how can they meet? Well, I guess the line and the circle can meet at exactly one point. That's one way it could happen. The line can cross the circle at two points as well. Or the line can never meet the circle. And in the next couple of videos, we'll deal with all of these situations. But first, let me just quickly graph out these two so we get a sense of what, what's happening here. You can run lots of programs to graph these things out. I'm just going to use Grapher here that I have on my Mac. So what I'm going to do is set up x squared, the circle, right? Plus, press down, plus y squared equals 9. So we'll see that. And there you see that circle, right? Center at 0, radius 3. So it's going 3 in every direction. We're going to add another equation. Now let's add in our line. So we have um, x minus 1, right? Plus y equals 2. And there you can see it. The line is crossing the circle twice. So here we can expect to find, right, let's just zoom in for a moment. We can expect to find two solutions, and we'll find these two points. You can get a sense of what they are already, right? It looks like this point is 3, 0, and this point up here is also 0, 3. But let's just see how to solve this algebraically. So what do we do? Well, if they're meeting at some point, here and here, that means that at, at these two values, right, these two equations have the same x and y values, which means they're equal at these two points. They're not equal anywhere else, but they are equal twice. To find when these two equations meet and when they're equal, what I'm going to think about is how can I rewrite this second equation so it says something like x equals or y equals, right, the other variable, and then plug it into the first equation. Let me show you what I mean. So I'll write up here, different tool. So we have x minus 1, right, plus y equals 2. Well, for me, it just seems easier to subtract x minus 1 from both sides. Because then what will happen? Well, let's just see, right, we do this. This cancels out, and we get y equals 2 minus x plus 1 right, because we're subtracting a negative 1, and then y equals, well, we have 2 plus 1, which is 3, and then we have y equals 3 minus x. So what does this mean? Well, I can now plug this in to my first equation. My first equation says x squared plus y squared equals 9, but we know that y is equal to 3 minus x, and this is the second equation. So we can plug that in, right? Because we're assuming at some point these two things are equal. So here, instead of writing y, I'll write 3 minus x squared. And that's going to equal 9. Now this is nice, even though you might feel confused about this, because what's happening here is instead of having two variables in one equation, we have now one variable, x, for one equation. And if I expand this, I get x squared plus, right, this is 3 minus x times 3 minus x, and that equals 9. Use the distributive property here, we have 3 times 3, which is 9. 3 times minus x, which is minus 3x. Minus x times 3, which is another minus 3x. And then minus x times minus x, which is plus x squared. And that equals 9. So we have x squared, right, plus 9 minus 3x, minus 3x plus x squared. So if I subtract 9 from both sides and simplify, what's going to happen? Well, 9 minus 9 is 0. Over here, these 9s cancel out as well. It's 0. But I have minus 3x minus 3x. That's minus 6x. 
and two and two x squared, which is just two x squared. So now we have this equation: two x squared minus six x equals zero. And all we have to do is solve for x. So if I factor out two x here, I get two x times right x minus three equals zero. So we have two scenarios now. If you recognize this, if I multiply this term by this term to get zero, either one of three things will happen. 2x will be equal to zero, right? To get a product, we're multiplying these two of zero. If the first number is zero, then your product is zero. If we solve for x there, we divide both sides by two, and x equals zero. The other thing that could happen is x minus three could be equal to zero, right? Because if this was equal to zero, x minus three, that times anything would give you zero. If we solve for x here, we add three to both sides, and x equals three. So now, um, either one of these two situations will happen, or they're both equal to zero. We already saw in our picture that both points do work, but if you had to test it out to figure out what which one of these work, you can just plug them in. And in fact, we should plug them in, because we need to know our y values. We're attempting to find points here. So let me just clear this off. Okay, and fill that in. Oops. Oops. Okay. So now, what do we do? Well, we, we, we're assuming we don't know these points here, but we're saying, well, perhaps x is equal to 0. If that's the case, we can plug it now into either equation. I'm going to use the linear equation and avoid the exponents. So if x is equal to 0, and I'm plugging it into our linear equation, x minus 1, right, plus y equals 2, then we get what? Well, 0, right, x is 0, so 0 minus 1 plus y equals 2. 0 minus 1 is negative 1, plus y equals 2. We add 1 to both sides, and we get y equals 3. And that gives us our first point. In this point, x is equal to 0, and y is equal to 3, right? So that's our first solution. That's where these, the circle and this line meet. What about the second point? Well, we, we've already tried it out, right? x equals 0, now we try x equals 3. Let's plug it into the same equation. If x equals 3, then we have, again, we're plugging into x minus 1 plus y equals 2, and we're saying x equals 3, so substitute that in, 3 minus 1 plus y equals 2, 3 minus 1 is 2, plus y is, is 2, subtract 2 from both sides, and we get our answer. At this point, y equals 0. So that's our second point. When x equals 3 and y equals 0, these two equations meet. So that's 3 and 0. That's exactly what we had here in our original graph. Here you can see 3, 0 and 0, 3. But we can also solve it algebraically. All right, hope that helped.